Now let's talk about unsupervised learning. Do you remember what it was? Unsupervised learning is when there is no output data. We haven't labeled our data. So the model tries to understand the data on its own. One of the most common type of unsupervised learning is clustering. Clustering is when our model tries to put the data in different groups, in different clusters. So it tries to find the similar data and puts them in different groups and it helps to categorize the data. And one of the most common algorithms for clustering is k-means. What does it do? It divides a data set into a specified number of clusters or groups based on the similarity of the features of the inputs. So let's go to our code and see how we can do it in PHP. This is the code from last lesson when we were trying to classify the data and it was a supervised learning. So we had the output, but now we are going to practice unsupervised learning. We are going to use the same data. We are going to go through the steps and see which ones are necessary, which ones are not necessary, which ones should change and so on. The data can be iris data as we have already seen. It's a data for different flowers Based on the features, we are trying to understand the type of flower that we see. And it had four features and an output, but in our case for today, we don't need the output because it's an unsupervised learning. And we don't need to divide our data to train set and test set anymore. We are going to use all of the samples for our clustering. Then let's go to the next part. Next part is clustering. We are not going to use a classifier so let's change it clustering and instead of k nearest neighbors we are going to use k means k means gets a cluster number the number of clusters that we need so here we have to specify a number the number of groups that at the end it should give us how can we know what number we should put here there are two ways, there are two options. The first option is that we already know the data, that we understand the data, we know that the type of categories that exist in that data, and we put it here. For example, in our case for today, we know that the data that we have are for three type of flowers. So we put three. Then another type is when we don't have any idea the number of groups that are possible to exist in that data. In that case, there are some advanced mathematical formulas that can help us and it works like this. We cluster the data with different numbers. For example, we put the data in one cluster, two cluster, three cluster, and so on. Calculates a value and at the end, based on those values, we can see which one works the best because, for example, even right now in our data, if I put 10, it would give me 10 clusters but I know that seven of them are useless, are not helpful. And with large data and the data that we have no idea how many groups it should be, that mathematical formula can help us a lot. And for example, you can search for elbow method in clustering and see how it works in details. But since this course is just an introduction, I'm not going to go to the details of that and not 33, <laughs> okay? We are not going to train, there is no training step anymore and we just go straight to cluster. We wanted to cluster the data. We didn't divide our data to train set and test set. So we are going to get all the samples and there is no second argument. We just give it the samples and it returns the clusters. So we are going to store that in a variable. Then there is no prediction step. There is no accuracy step, so we can remove all of them. That's it. That's how it clusters the data. What should we do now? We can take a look at one of them to see how it looks. Wardam clusters. PHP index.php. There are so many data. Let me go off. Okay. It divided data into three groups 
and each group for each group it put the data related to that group in another array so here we have an array of arrays okay for example here there is an array with a length of three and each array has the samples related to that cluster inside that cluster we have an array of the features so we can use this structure we can write a for each loop and write all of these data in csv file so we can use later so let's do it we can write for each clusters as cluster as we saw each cluster on its own was an array of data so we have to write another for each for each cluster as data and each data was an array of features so if we for example write data 0 it would be the first input of the first row of our data so let's write all of them into a csv file first of all let's open a file file equals to f open clustered data that csv and the mode should be w before i forget let me close the file as well file okay now we want to write everything so f put csv and we pass file as the first argument and the second argument should be the, the array of data here i want to write the number of cluster the cluster index as well so i would know okay this was my data the cluster was one the cluster was zero the cluster was two we can use the index of this array the key of this array as our cluster number so we could understand that okay this was for group zero group one group two and later we can change those zero one and two to different labels that we want so i'm going to change my for each to for each key value type so i would get that index as well and my data which is an array on its own if i put it like that I, it's not going to work so i'm going to create another array that is a flattened array and with this value so data to write would be an array i want to write my data and then the key the cluster number and then write that to a file but right now if i run the code i'm going to give, get an error because this data on its own is an array i can go through the data and i say okay write zero write one write two or if you are using php 7 and above you can use the splat operator which is three dots and it would flatten the data it would get each variable out of the array and puts it there so it's exactly like if i had written something like data zero data one data two and so on but imagine if we had a thousand columns it would be very frustrating so i'm going to use splat operator to do that for me and then i'm going to write the key which was the index of an array but in our case we are going to use that to specify the cluster number and then we write it to a file so let's run the code and see if we received any error php index that php it didn't get any error and it ran the code so let's see our data okay here are the features 4.931.4 and 0 0.2 it belonged to cluster 0 and cluster 1 cluster 2 and it's great now let's review our code to see what we did with just three lines of codes we load the data in our case it was iris data let me show you the data again it was iris data and it had four features and then the species and in our case it was only three types of flowers 
But when we loaded the data, we didn't need the outputs. We only got the samples because we only needed the samples for our clustering. We didn't divide our data to test set and train set. It's not necessary with clustering. And we use the k-means algorithms. We specified the number of clusters as three. But if you have a different data, you should put it here. And then we asked it to cluster the data. We save the clusters to a variable because we wanted to write to a file. Now, based on this file, I know that, okay, if there are these features, it belongs to category one. It belongs to category two. Later, I can change zero, one, two to some more meaningful labels, like the name of the flower as well. So what can we do with this data? Well, the sky is the limit because right now, Imagine if we didn't have the output and based on these data, now we have some output. We can train another classifier based on these features and the output that we have. And then with the new data, we can predict it. Or for example, if we are online store and we want to categorize our visitor, the people that come to our website and buy something. As you know, not all the visitors buy something. Some of the visitors just favorite the products and some of the buyers are the people that come to the website, buy something and then never come back. We don't know that though, but with this clustering, we can give uh, some input data and it would put all these visitors, all these buyers in different categories. And later when we want to run a campaign, we could be like, okay, I want to run a campaign for the people who come to our website on a daily basis, but they don't buy anything. So maybe pricing is the problem. We are going to send them a special discount to see if it changes anything and things like that. It could help a lot. And it was, as you can see, only three lines of code. This is just pure magic. It's amazing. It's unbelievable. And it's very easy to do with the help of these libraries, obviously. That's it. Let's continue with our course.